So as a group, we were trying to help students develop into thoughtful, ethical people, but also have the skills to be successful in the world right now. And as Jen alluded to, those skills, those requisite skills are great. And we students need to be able to communicate their ideas in writing, possibly in multiple languages. They need to be able to extract and understand other people's ideas through reading. They need to be able to solve challenging problems in mathematics, understand what that was was. And they need to be able to have the curiosity <laughs> of a scientist, but also like the discipline of a scientist to follow through the process. And of the creativity of an artist, they need to be more capable than I am or than we are, maybe. We have to provide them with some skills. And so what I want to kind of talk through is um, some of the curricular resources we can provide to students so they can have access to those skills, and how we're trying to get better at monitoring, well, how we're doing and preparing students for college and career, even as we're working on improving how we are doing that. Okay? So what I'm sharing right here are just some of the advanced offerings we have in this all high school. It's a bit too simplified in terms of the number of advanced placement offerings we have at the high school. They include things in literature, in English, in mathematics, in science, in the arts, and in foreign language. We are also, this is not like, rigor is not delivered through solely through advanced placement courses. We are working on the increased rigor in the early grades through courses, through acceleration of mathematics, but also just through differentiating and meeting kids the challenge that's appropriate. And then finally, we're actually delivering that kind of like college career guidance through not just our counseling work in general, but in the school day through discovery class, daily through our crew structure, and trying to build some of the other cultural um, things we hope for, and that we hope kids would experience into the school year, for example, experiential learning. You know, we just got back from a, a day or two of experiential education where our student body took part in um, courses such as service to the Mountain Huts, um, rock climbing on the Mountain Pass, to visiting colleges on the front of the college. But one of the metrics we can use to see how we are doing with respect to college preparedness is to look at the ACT, which is an assessment, it's one assessment, it's imperfect, but it does a reasonably good job in tracking how we're doing preparing kids for college and career in English, in math, and in science. And so what we're seeing is we do reasonably well. We have some things to work on, but relative to our district, we're being re relatively successful. We start to dig into these numbers, which I won't take you through during this meeting. Um, I would just be obsessed about the numbers. You know, um, we see some trends, like we do need some work in rigor and literacy, which we're trying to implement math. We also see some trends in demographics, where we have some bright spots, but some gaps and some challenges we need to address as a school and as a community. So as we look at different demographics in the school, by the way, we're approximately, it's like 60-ish percent Latino and 40-ish percent white as a school, which is similar to the middle school. Um, we have a gap in how we're getting results from kids in terms of how they're prepared for college. Even if you were walking to school, you wouldn't necessarily know the difference between how the different students with different ethnic backgrounds may, maybe interact. It seems that now we're getting different results to address that gap, even as we raise performance revenue. And we've done, uh, we, we're starting to make some progress over time, and we did have some successes last year with implementing some supports, just like tracking students' performance on the ACT a bit more effectively, but the real change comes less from just preparing them to test prep and tracking, it really comes from embedding college readiness and the on an everyday basis. That's what we're going to see the most kind of lift and help perform over the years. Now, I'm going to transition to give you guys a listen to, to Liz, who's the most, important, most popular person in our school. Um, before that, I'm sure you have some, you might have some questions about Salt High School, but you might not want to have to go through 
one of the three of us, that will be welcome that as well. So I did want to point you in the direction of um, our school website, on which you may find oh, this is a page. If you wanted to look into some of the services we will provide for college and career, you might find a similar thing to what uh, the middle schools have a great job putting together in terms of what you should be thinking about over the course of the years in high school. You may also find things like where are kids from this old high school going to college? Which I will not leave on the screen for long because it's in the internet. You, if you wish to find it, you can find it on the road. But there's a wealth of resources there if you're curious about our school and how we're doing for students. And with that, I pass it to Elizabeth Hazel, our college counselor.